This is practice problem one from lesson 14 for representations. And in this problem, this first problem, you're given an equation for the cost of gasoline. And it says that the cost of gasoline is actually $2.95 per gallon. So if you buy one gallon of gas, it's going to cost you $2.95. And so you're supposed to write down at least four different amounts of gas, four different amounts, numbers of gallons, and the cost. Create a graph of the relationship. What does the $2.95 represent? And then Jada's mom makes a remark about that gas. And so the equation, the cost is equal to $2.95 per gallon. If you write the constant proportionality as the unit rate, $2.95 or 2 and 95 hundredths per one, that's going to be per one gallon. Then you're going to multiply that number times the number of gallons. So it makes sense that the total cost is $2.95 times the number of gallons. Each gallon costs $2.95. So however many gallons you purchase, it's going to be $2.95 times that number of gallons. So here are four examples. I'm going to use the one gallon of gas, three gallons of gas, five gallons of gas, and nine gallons of gas. And notice that the gallons of gas is going to be the x coordinate, the x value. That's the independent variable. You go into a gas station, you buy a certain number of gallons of gas. You buy five gallons, and then they tell you how much it costs. So the cost is going to be the dependent variable. It's dependent on how many gallons of gas you purchase. And you get the cost by multiplying the number of gallons times $2.95. So the cost divided by the number of gallons equals that $2.95. So therefore, you multiply the number of gallons by $2.95, and that gives you the cost, the total cost. $2.95, $8.85, $14.75, and $26.55. So I'm going to use one example to show you how you can calculate these values in your head. If you notice that $2.95 is just five cents less than $3, then you can use the distributive property and that idea to relatively easy, easily figure out what the total cost is. So for example, for three gallons, that's gonna be three times three gallons, I'm sorry, $3 minus five cents. Well, three times $3 is that $9 and for every, three dollars you have to subtract five cents and you do that three times so three times five cents is 15 cents so the answer is going to be nine dollars minus 15 cents and that you can do in your head that is eight dollars and 85 cents so again this is using the distributive property to make this calculation three times two dollars and 95 cents in your head it's hard for me to multiply three times 95 it's much easier for me to see that as three times one, for example, minus three times um, five. So that would be the 95. And then it's also, um, I'm kind of making a mess of this. Let's just go back to here. It's easier to see three times three is $9 and every $3 you have to take off five cents. So three times five cents is 15 cents. All right, so $2.95 is the cost per gallon. That is the unit cost. I'm going to buy one gallon of gasoline, one unit of gasoline, and the constant proportionality is $2.95 per that one unit or per that one gallon. And Jada's mom says, you can get about a third of a gallon of gasoline for $1. So if you look at the number of gallons of gasoline, and so in this case, it's going to be a third of a gallon, and you multiply by three because $2.95 is very close to $3. So you're just estimating. So you use three because it says you can get about a third of a gallon. So one third of a gallon times $3 costs you $1 to get that one third of a gallon. So she is correct. You can get about a third of a gallon of gasoline for $1. So put this on a graph. First of all, you have to decide what units you want to use for the um, lines 
on the graph. And so the gallons of gasoline, that one again is pretty easy. Um, this is zero, one gallon, two gallons, three gallons, up to 10 gallons of gasoline. The hard one is to decide what you want to label as the y-axis. Now it's cost in dollars, but remember it's $2.95 per gallon. Well, you don't want to use $2.95 for this line, and then this would be two times $2.95, three times $2.95. That's too hard. So you want to just round this up to the closest value to that $2.95. So I just counted up by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on up to 30. And so then if you graph the points that were on the table um, before, for one gallon of gasoline, it cost you $2.95. So you just put a point just below that three. For three gallons of gasoline, it costs you $8.85. So that's 15 cents. So this is six, seven, eight, nine. And so from eight to nine, you have to imagine um, 85 cents. A little bit less than 9, a little bit less than 15. So this is 12, 13, 14. And so this is about three fourths of the way between 14 and 15. So you just have to kind of imagine where that might be. This is a little bit farther less than 15 than the three gallons and one gallon. And finally, when you get to nine gallons, it's about halfway in between. So it's 24, 25, 26. 27 and so this value is about halfway between 26 and 27 again you just have to move this down a little bit more and finally remember that the number of gallons of gasoline is the independent variable so you're going to look at that number and then determine what the cost is that is dependent on the number of gallons of gasoline you purchase so if you go here three gallons of gasoline is going to cost you eight dollars and 85 cents Five gallons of gasoline is going to cost you $14.75. That's what this line means. It's the relationship between the cost in dollars and the gallons of gasoline. It is $2.95 per unit. So every unit you go over, you go up $2.95. Go over another unit, up $2.95. Over another unit, up $2.95. That's what this line means. So the equation that goes with that is the cost is equal to $2.95 times the number of gallons. So remember, once again, the x value, in this case it's gallons, is the independent variable. And what you calculate from that independent variable is the cost, which is dependent on the number of gallons of gasoline you purchase. The x-axis is gallons of gasoline, and the y-axis is cost. This is problem number two, and this is just a conversion problem. You're changing cups to tablespoons. So for if you have three cups of some volume, it doesn't tell you what you're measuring. It just says a volume, an unknown, quanti uh, an unknown thing. So three cups of milk, three cups of lemonade, whatever it is, and you want to know how many tablespoons that is, that is equal to 48 tablespoons. So what is the equation that shows you that conversion from number of cups to number of tablespoons? And so it says plot and label the at least two more points that represent this relationship. So you have to get an idea of what that constant of proportionality is, or in this case, you can use a scale factor as well. And I'm going to show you the relationship between the two. So I'm going to write, I'm going to use um, one cup, two and a half cups, and three cups. And I'm going to, I want to show you how writing these coordinates for a graph is the same as filling in one of those tables that we've been doing all along. So if you start with three cups of, let's say three cups of milk, that's 48 tablespoons. So how much is that per cup? Well, rather than three cups, if I use... Um, so first of all, this is the x-coordinate. This is the y-coordinate. So this is just like a table. And if I use um, one cup instead of three cups, that's one-third as much. So one-third of 48 is 16. 48 divided by 3 is 16. 
So you can get to that 16 a couple of different ways. But that 16 is the constant of proportionality because y divided by x, which is 16 divided by 1, equals 16. So for every one cup, you have 16 tablespoons of volume of, if we're using milk, of milk in this case. So 16 units for every 1x unit. So notice that the number of tablespoons, y, is 16 times greater than x. And that makes sense. You're measuring the same volume. It's one cup of milk. So how much is that in tablespoons? Well, tablespoons are a lot smaller. Tablespoons, a, a, one tablespoon is 1 16th the size of a cup. So you're going to need 16 tablespoons for that one cup. So y is going to be 16 times larger than whatever x is, whatever the number of cups is. So the number of tablespoons is 16 times the number of cups for because for every cup you get 16 tablespoons. A tablespoon is a smaller amount, a smaller measure, but if you're measuring the same volume, you have to measure the tablespoon out 16 times for every cup. Okay, on a graph, they gave you this point, three cups, um, is the same as 48 tablespoons. And you know this goes through zero. This is a proportional relationship. So you can draw the line through zero, zero, and through three cups and 48 tablespoons. And that tells you, that shows you that if you have three cups, and that's the independent variable. So I have three cups. How many tablespoons is that? So you go up to the graph, and you go over to the y-axis, and that tells you that's the same as, that's equal to 48 tablespoons. All right, so you can get to that 16 a couple of different ways. Once again, you can say, well, rather than three cups, I'm going to use one-third as much, which is one cup. That means I have to use one-third as much tablespoons. So 48 divided by three, or one-third of 48, is equal to 16. So one-third of, uh, of the three cups is one cup. One-third of 48 tablespoons is 16 tablespoons. This is using the scale factor. You can also get to the number of cups using the constant of proportionality because 48 divided by 3 is 16. That tells you y divided by x. That tells you the constant of proportionality, which is 16 tablespoons for one cup. So one cup times 16 is going to give you 16 tablespoons. So 16 tablespoons per one cup. That one cup is one unit. So what's the unit rate? It is 16, 16 tablespoons per cup. Also the same as the constant of proportionality. It's also the value of y when x is equal to one, or the number of cups is one cup. All right, so let's look at two and a half cups. Well, two and a half cups times 16 is 32. Two times that 16 is 32 tablespoons plus a half of 16. One half of 16 is eight. So 32 tablespoons plus eight tablespoons is going to equal 40 tablespoons. And you can check that on the graph. That's the usefulness of using a graph and an equation at the same time. So I'm going to check it. So two and a half. So two and a half is actually eight sixteenths of the way between 32 and 48, which is one half of the way. So I'm going to count up eight units from 32. That gets me to 40. I read over here and I um, confirm that the three cups is equal to 40 tablespoons. So let's try something a little bit different. So the equation is the number of tablespoons is equal to 16 times the number of cups. So whatever number of cups I have, I need to multiply that by 16 to get the number of tablespoons. The x-axis is the independent variable. So that's what you're going into the situation with. You're going to use so many cups, and you want to figure out, you want to calculate how many tablespoons that is. That's the dependent variable. So instead of um, half the way, Let's use something a little bit harder, a little bit more interesting look, to look at. Let's say that you use 2 and 11 sixteenths cups of milk in this case. How many tablespoons is that? 
Well, 11 sixteenths from 32 to 48, that's 16 units. So 32 plus 16 is equal to 48. So 11 sixteenths is 11 units of the way from 32 to 48. So this is 2 and 11 sixteenths. So it's 32 plus 11 more. So you're going to get up here to this is uh, 1 16th, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So right there, that's 2 and 11 sixteenths. So what um, is the value for the number of tablespoons? Well, 2 times 16, you can look at this as 2 and 11 sixteenths, as 2 plus 11 sixteenths times this 16. Well, 2 times 16 is 32. And, but notice what happens to the 11 sixteenths. That's 11 units of the way from 32 to 43. So 11 sixteenths times 16 is that 11 units. So what's 32 plus that 11 units? It is 43. So 2 and 11 sixteenths goes, you read up to this line and you read over and you see that that is equal to 43 tablespoons. So using the graph to confirm the calculation. So I hope this makes sense to you. And I hope this idea of it's 11 sixteenths of the way. And if you're going to multiply by 16, um, one way that teachers will talk about the, that is the 16s cancel out 16. 1 16th of 16 is 1. And then you have 11 of those. So 11 times 1 is equal to 11.